Hello and welcome to this week's Swap and Chips coming from the MTD HQ in Northamptonshire. As always, we have a packed show featuring some of the latest industry news. Plus, there are two chances this week for you to win a Swap and Chips goodie bag. Right, let's go. Paul recently travelled to Dugard Machine Tools to take a look at the Kitamura My Center 5 axis machine. You will not believe the accuracy of this machine tool. It is Staggering, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's all going to happen within the show. Uh, Joe has ITC in today's technical corner, and they'll be telling us all about their new catalog and some of the highlighted products that they have. And you can't forget today's cycle time challenge, which is a beauty. Now I'm going to give you one clue now, and the part it utilizes 30 different tools. Right? Uh, Paul visits Alcan Engineering to witness some heavy engineering. Um, there, it's an incredible, incredible show today. Five axis machines, there is a lot available in the marketplace. I'm going to tell you about one specifically which I've been very impressed with. I'm at Dugard here in Hove. This is the Kitamura uh, five axis machine. This is uh, their, their My Center machine in center. Now, if you look in this machine, you will see uh, how, how well the machine is designed. Um, you'll see the accessibility of the machine is very good and you'll see um, really how the machine is made up in terms of its structure with the table here being supported both sides and you'll also get a feel for the capacity. Now this is actually a BBT uh, spindle on this machine. It's a very stable machining environment and it's a very accurate machine which really brings me on to the point that I want to make about the Kitamura machines. They are ideal for very high precision component manufacture uh, as a result of the accuracies, the positional accuracy of the machine. Two microns over whatever the working envelope of the machine is. Now that's quite incredible uh, when you consider what goes into the makeup and the mechanics of a five axis machine. Now these machines or Kitamura machines are all built in Japan, they're hand built. Even the, even the, the box guideways are, or the guideways are scraped, all of that is uh, all of the machine is man-made in Japan. Now they use the Mitsubishi control, or the back end of the control is a Mitsubishi control, which again I'm told uh, is, is a very impressive factor in the ab machine's ability to run at extremely high speeds uh, with great agility. But the accuracy is the key one. That's the topic of conversation really in this video. Uh, do you know of another machine that can achieve that type of positional accuracy? Uh, because I've been dead impressed, uh, and this is the Kitamura My Center here, available from Dugard, uh, and this is just one of many machines within the range. Paul, oh, after seeing that, my first question would be, if you're going to get two microns, are you paying a lot more money for that? Because, you know, there's a lot of competition in the industry for this type of machine. Well, Dugard would say no. Um, mm. I mean, they are competitively priced machines, but there's... When you look at price, are you talking about what your outlay is or are you talking about your return on investment? Because, yeah. you know, this type of machine isn't just about the positional accuracy and the accuracy. It's also about speed uh, because these, these, the Kitamura machines are very, very fast machines. And interestingly, a couple of the points that I didn't mention on this is that, well, I may have done, but it's a box guideway machine, but mm -hmm. they are the fastest box guideway machines in the world. They run up to 60 meters a minute on their rapids. Now that's pretty unheard of, well it is unheard of on other machine tool manufacturers. Normally to get those sorts of speeds, you would opt for a linear guideway machine, we which is a, a topic yeah. of conversation that we've had before. Um, but they get that sort of speed and the fact they've got twin ball screws on this, these machines, which also give the machine better uh, accuracy as you can, you can see I've said here, but also uh, not just the speed, reliability and longevity too. And who are they aimed at? Uh, medical, medical manufacturers, aerospace parts, real mold high and dye. mold and dye, um, and general job shops. This is where Dugard is saying that with the Kitamura machine, you asked the, the question about price. I did that with Eric as well on yeah. another interview. Well, and, and he said, actually, you'll be surprised at, at what these machines cost. So definitely okay. worth exploring. Yeah. I think also, Paul, am I correct? These machines are hand scraped. They're hand scraped machines, yeah. You, you, yeah. You'd assume that the uh, machine being hand scraped, they'd be less accurate? 
Why would you assume that though? I know we had a question. We had someone, I think, comment on one of our previous videos yes, about yeah, the differences yeah. between. It kind of contradicts box. what you know. Yeah, what what I, that I, argument? I, I, I was think that, that, that if you're looking thing. for longevity in a machine and you want repeatability over a long period of time, then a box guideway machine, to me, from from my knowledge, is 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 the type of machine that you would. Uh, potentially opt for, but but it depends on the strategies, the cutting strategies. Nowadays, people aren't going for those heavier, deeper cuts; they're going for quicker, lighter cuts. Mm. Uh, so Look there's less wear on the machine. Yeah. So it, th there's lots of pros and cons. And the yeah. processing times with the Mitsubishi Control is a really Extremely important well. point too. Yeah. yeah, process as fast as your brain. <laughs> not <laughs> that fast. That's <laughs> no, not that fast. No. <laughs> genius, genius. The US Geo. Uh, well, certainly a very impressive machine. So get in touch with Dugard Machine Tools if you would like to learn more about the My Center. Coming up next, uh, Joe is with Paul Enzer of ITC in today's Technical Corner. Thanks, Lindsay. Today I'm joined by a good friend of the show, Paul Enzer from ITC. And Paul, you've brought in three new catalogues. Yeah, hi, Joe. Um, yeah, just really is an illustration of where ITC is nowadays. So we're up to issue 15 of our own catalogues. That's 15 years of producing this and, and bringing products into our catalogue. Our own manufacturing plant at Tamworth is growing all the while. We're investing in new machinery, and that's reflected by the new tools and the new mm -hmm. ranges that we've got inside our catalogue. Our catalogue has always been solid carbide product, um, and a number of years ago, we obviously took on the agency for Widia. Mm -hmm. Widia make great solid carbide product, but also had the added benefit of having back-end product, and more importantly for us, the indexable product. So it really strengthens our portfolio from just being a solid carbide provider to going into the indexable realms as well. And then we're also UK agents for the big Kaiser product. So big die shower tool holders, mm -hmm. face and taper, which is you know famous for them. They make the gauging. High quality product. Massively, yeah. It's it's big die shower make the gauging for the machine tool people to actually make their spindles which correspond with the tooling that they produce. So it is the original face and taper and the best quality you can get. And additionally, you've bought something to get rid of swarf and chips. <laughs> so from the Kaiser stable, um, a chip fan. So quite simple, get that in your spindle, spin it up, and it will blow all your chips away. So it's, it is simple, but why would you use it? It's not just to get rid of chips, is it? Well, it is, but there's a reason. <laughs> um, Nowadays, more people are looking at automated processes, mass production, etc. So the less you can actually have manual intervention, the better. So as part of process, blowing coolant, blowing swarf mm -hmm. off parts between operations or at the end of operations is going to help. And that's exactly what this product does for you. Many thanks, Paul. So there we have it. You've heard it from Paul. ITC are trying to get rid of swarf and chips. Well, that's not very nice of ITC wanting to get rid of us. Wasn't that a gag, though? Yeah, 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 it was. It was. <laughs> um, right, talking about um, ITC, is it is it a benefit, the fact that they've got third-party products and they're looking after them as well with Whittier and Big Kaiser? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Mm. So their supply in their carbide range as standard and their other cutting tools, the indexable range with Whittier. However, the tools are only as good as the, the tool holders. So with Big Kaiser, we're one of the best tool holder manufacturers in the world. So they give the tools the longevity and the accuracy that they require. They give the machine tool the longevity. So effectively, it's, it's connecting the, the machine tool spindle, the tool holder, and the cutting tool, which ultimately is cutting the component. I always find that cutting the cutting tool market is very competitive. Mm. You, you know, they're very protective over their customers, and often they don't like uh, companies to know where their customers are because cutting tool other cutting tool manufacturers come in and say, "Try this tool. This one's better. I can make this part faster." Mm. See it all the time. Um, but what what is evident with ITC when we talk to their customers is that they do very well at maintaining their customers, yeah. and and when people do try and compete against them, I know a few companies that have tried to to break into their accounts with certain uh, carbide cutting tools. And like you say, with those combinations, they pretty much provide you with the, the best cutting solution. And just to add to the video as well, I know that w we've spoken about this before the show and you know that the Swarf fan, you said it's been around a while, but actually it's quite interesting that even though it's been around a while, if you think about automation and how that's progressing, things that maybe have been around a while that have been parked away might now be required in the future. Yeah. More so, because I mean, I mean, he's changing. certainly a chip fan, isn't he? A <laughs> 
bitch <laughs> fan. Not, not, there's no, it's, it's certainly don't you want to get... You have got that written down <laughs> so you can get it into the you show. You certainly don't want joke. to get rid of swarf and chips. But we're, we're, that's the first solid chip fan that I've seen. I've seen ones that kind of segregate. They're like flappy and they segregate. That's the first kind of solid one that I've seen yeah. in a propeller form. But if you're doing deep pockets... Um, and it's filling up with swarf, it's imperative to get rid of that swarf or it's going to damage your cutting tools. Yeah. And like you mentioned, Lindsay, if you're automating, you can't afford a tool breaking down no. in, in the night shift. And uh, he's not a swarf and chips fan, but Joe's a fish and chips fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Have you got that one fun. written down? No, I haven't. Ever. I just oh, made okay. that one up. <laughs> that I'll make yeah. mine up. You make yeah, your yeah, or is he yeah. reads it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, up next we have a cycle time challenge that cannot be missed. Now I'm with Christian Lloyd here at Abbey Precision in Milton Keynes and we've got a cycle time challenge for you today on this application um, but before we actually get into the real detail about how this is machined, um, Christian you've got two MX330s here, they are five axis machines with the ten uh, pallet pulls on them, how much of a difference have these machines made to your business? Oh, They've made a huge difference, uh, we can machine parts an awful lot faster than we could before the machine will run overnight, it will machine continuously, whereas before this part would be run on one machine, one part at a time, with the man having to load it at the end of the operation. With these machines we can hit ten parts in one go, machine it overnight, all the parts are done complete. Right, so previously this was quite an arduous I mean, there's a lot of risk in moving this part around, isn't there? I mean, we, we, we won't dwell on that now, but I just want to ask you now, the machining of this component, talk to me about, forget the first stop where you're doing the base, okay. just the, the second operation where you're doing this in one hit. Tell us about the machining that's been done. Okay, so um, you'll come in initially with a, what we call a 16mm Allen Master, and do a high-speed machining to rough all the metal away. You can actually see the, the roughing toolpath in here. That will take away the majority of the material and then from there you'll come in and do what we call a rest machining which will take you closer to your small uh, radiuses for your cutters and then from there it's a process of finishing all the surfaces, drilling all the holes, tapping, thread milling, accessing all the different sides of the part. There's quite a lot of different, is there a lot of different tools on here? I know there's a lot of different diameters of there holes. Is, there is about 30 tools on this particular job. Um, 30 tools, okay, and so five faces being machined. That's correct. On this part, the material is just a standard aluminium. That's right, yeah, 6082 uh, aluminium. Okay, so I want to know how long that operation takes to do all those five faces. Put your guesses uh, in the uh, comments box below on whatever social channel you're watching this on and we'll reveal the answer next week. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Put your guesses in the comments box below. Any guesses? You know. You yes. know the answers. Um, I reckon about four hours. Four, four hours. hours. There's a lot of work in that component. It is a lot. Nice component. Just in, in addition to the Cycle Time Challenge, this company was set up in 1996 invested um, about what I think it's one and a half or yeah, one and a half million pounds in the last two years in machinery when this MX330 is very very popular um, around the world now we're seeing lots of them go in but what is interesting is when we put or have put the story of this company on our Facebook feed there was lots of people that were just you know when people tag names in you look yeah. and they don't say anything they just tag a name in yeah. you know that they're obviously sharing the story so it's basically saying look at this machine, look at this machine, look yeah. at this machine. So, and, and you can understand why. The, the, the pallet system, the compactness, the speed, um, the, the unmanned run, which is everything that these guys wanted. They are very powerful machines. And it's quite interesting because when you don't see this, but when we're watching the video, we have a little bit of a discussion whilst you're watching the video, whilst we're watching it too. And we were just all saying what an incredible part that mm. this was, that it was making. So you can understand an engineer getting excited over this as well. And the like, fact oh, that it used this. to make it in all the, uh, you know, different ops moving it around yes. it's, it's you know why would you do that it's just changed so much mm. anyway like paul said if you do get it right you can win a swarf and chips goodie bag and it really really is an impressive uh, component definitely right now finally paul re recently vi vi ugh, i'll say that again visited alcan engineering so just you wait to see the screw in this video Wow, what a feature we've got this week on Swarf and Chips. Uh, Chris, we're here at Alcan Engineering. Now, you've got some fantastic uh, products going through the machine shop, or the workshop, I should say, including this. Can you explain what you've got here? Yeah, this is a, an Archimedes screw. It actually uh, generates hydroelectricity underwater, this, this one. 
what I also like about this, interestingly, is this, these edges here. I'm not going to touch this, I think it's just been painted. But these have been welded on here. Obviously, this is almost like your, your cutting edge. Um, but what a fabulous piece of uh, fabricated engineering. Now, we're going to be quick because we've got a challenge for you on this week's Swarf and Ships. I'm going to walk down the, uh, the shop here at Alcan Engineering and we're going to show you another product, a little bit similar to this. And we want to find out from you, the viewer, what you believe this is. What is the finished product going to be? Uh, and where would it be sited? And of course, the winner will be, uh, be the proud owner of a Swarf and Ships goodie bag. And um, Chris, uh, we're going to point the camera at this. Obviously, this is a typical sort of uh, sort of fabricated part that you're making here, isn't it? Tell us yeah. a little bit about Alken Engineering as a company. Yeah, so Alken Engineering itself, um, sort of the Alken Group, we, we actually got a profile shop as well. So we get a lot of our own profiles, our own, own materials, and then we can sort of see the job through from start to finish, really, fabrication side, then just straight onto general machining. And this you have a got typical job for us, really. Typical job, typical size as well. You've got a nice machine shop down there operating XYZs, which we've looked at today. But the question is for you, the viewer, what is this? Where is this going to end up? Uh, we will tell you the answer on next week's show, but put your comments and guesses on whichever social uh, platform you're watching this on. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. So, yes, another bonus competition this week for you. What do you think that that fabrication is used for? I have no idea myself. Neither have I, Lindsay. I know. You know. <laughs> Can you give any clues to uh, anyone? No, no. Is your, well, uh, uh, go on, like it's, maybe... It's, um, yeah, it's hard. I don't know. I can't give you clues <laughs> oh to guess. Oh, my gosh, that's but what's in it? I, I really love this, um, this Archimedes screw mm. here. Uh, he obviously told us what, what it was for, but it just what a piece of engineering that mm. is. I mean, yeah. you like a good screw, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> don't get him any more, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but oh the dear. but the but the company itself employed fifty people. It's seventy percent fabrication, thirty percent machining. The reason we were here, X Y Z have installed linear rail, their LR machines, into this company. Mm. Now X Y Z introduced the LR machine to be a slightly more economical purchase of a vertical machining centre. And some might then say, again, the linear rail argument: is it capable mm. of cutting hard materials? This business was subcontracting out their super duplex parts. Yes but they bought the components back in house because they couldn't get the surface finish or the precision from another company. Oh. So they bought them in and bought the LR machines and the XYZ LR machines are uh, eating this uh, super duplex really? for breakfast. Really? Because we talk about super duplex, don't we? So it just shows the stability of, the, of, that, of that machine. So mm -hmm. that was really the story. And it just goes to show that linear machines can cut the hard materials as yeah. well because of the cutting strategy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's changed. Right, okay, so make sure you leave your guesses in the box below. Well, I think that is enough for this week. So do not forget uh, this week's cycle time challenge as well as what Paul has created the fabrication challenge too. Gents, thank you so much for today and um, everyone, more importantly, for you watching at home as well. So thank you. And as we always say, keep yeah, those spindles turning. turning.